Hi friends, welcome to the tutorial on Golang. So I am going to give a small training on Golang which should be hands on, which means we will learn each aspect of the Golang programming and we will also see it in action. So uh, let's do the uh, uh, very first program in Go. So the any program in Go, the very first line has to be package just like java and other languages like c c plus plus so this is mainly inspired by c uh, i mean not exactly but few people say it's related it's pretty much the owner or the creator of golang uh, has also created the c and unix so this is pretty much um, uh, in lot of ways inspired by that so we'll find some commonalities so very first thing is it also has an entry point and the entry point is called as main. Uh, this also happens in uh, Java, right? So this is my function, uh, which is named as main. And uh, let me try to run this. So when I run, basically, it won't show anything. It just says um, that program has been executed. So let me just <laughs> do the um, hello world. So FMT is a package which provides the function which is called as println. So we will write our first program called as hello world. Let's run this. So it goes here. Now we will learn uh, different things. So before I do that, I also want to tell you, you can also uh, do same thing with the command prompt like running. I am using idea IntelliJ. Uh, which helps, um, uh, which is called as IDE, Integrated Development Environment. But Golang is designed in such a way so that you can easily do everything like compilation, running, packaging, uh, dependency management from common prompt. So let's see Go help. So Go help is going to tell you about all the different commands from which you can operate it from the mm, command prompt commands basically, right? So very first, which I want to tell you is go run and then you have to give the file name. So which directory we are in right now. So let's go here and say go run main.go. And this would execute uh, your uh, file uh, and then this will run the output same way you can say go build and you can either give the file name or you can give uh, star dot go and things like that so now you do so you get a build this red color guy is the build so you can just um, this is executable so once you do this this will run uh, so I'll tell you later in tutorial that if you have multiple uh, files, you could also go with uh, go build and then just say star dot go. So all the files would be part of build and they would be part of the main. And then you can just run a main just like a exe, like a executable file. So let's go ahead and then let's try to understand how the values in the go are being used so very first thing after hello world you would go with fmt.println now please take care that uh, don't do a mistake of uh, doing small println because uh, anything which starts with capital is accessed outside the package so you are importing a package called as format like fmt uh, if you do small p it doesn't work this is case sensitive so uh, any uh, method which is which starts with capital p can be accessed outside that package so now let's go with println so we will see string concatenation what does that mean is i have any string we can also define uh, through data types and can concatenate but let's say simple uh, i and then you say love and then you can have any variable you can do anything but i will say my mom and let's run this quickly 
so you see here uh, there is uh, no gap right so I might have to do a gap or I could also append the empty gap over here this would also work see here now it's a I love my mom so this is called as the string concatenation now let's see inside the print block if we can also do some math so if I am trying to say 1 plus 2, would it allow? So yes, it does. You could also do the multiplications. So let's make it a li little bit challenging because 1 cross 2 is very simple even for computer. And can I write strings and other things? Mul uh, multiple multi p l i multiplication test so what we saw here is um, once you do println by doing comma you could uh, pass any arguments and they won't create problem the people from python might see that you have to cast it in str like the string and then you have to uh, write everything here you can do fmt.println so if you will see here then you could uh, pass any number of arguments like it's none argument to variable argument like how how many number you want here you could do that So let's try to do a division as well here. So let me do a division for you. We will write the float values and we will try to type them. So these are two float values and then they get divided. Now we would write the boolean. So we will use the shortcut operator or the and operator basically here. So we'll say print Helen and I would say true true is a bool or a boolean so I would go with that and then there is and operator so this is and I will say false so let's see how would it take it sorry about the spelling error so this would of course uh, write false here and then you could also make it as the or operator so this would make it true any value in these uh, is if it is true then it would go true now let's go with the inversion so if I have the value of true and I want to invert it I could also do that here yep so now uh, let's look at the variables so now we will look at the variables all this code you can find on my github i am going to share that uh, i have shared that rather in the description of this video so on my youtube channel video you can find the link or you could go to my github and then just search for go lab it's a lab like i have a laboratory environment so it has a lot of different mini projects playgrounds and tutorials so it would help so now uh, let's try to look for the variables so i would uh, uh, basically do a shortcut thing i'll create another main here but before i do that let me rename this refactor rename and i would say print statements right and i am going to create another main the reason is so see if i will run this now it would run without a problem anything which is part of main package would run so now we are going to look at something different which will be the variables right so i am going to again create a main file here which will be uh, which which will have the function main and we will start uh, 
understanding how the variables are defined. So let's say I want to create a variable called as x. So it has the intelligence that uh, based on whatever the data type uh, like the value it would infer and then you see red which means uh, this is unused so uh, go is very optimized if you don't use any package uh, go will remove it uh, if you don't use any variables it won't it has a very strict memory management so it doesn't allow you to have unused uh, memory spaces so it gives you the error over here so as soon as you do fmt dot println in x like in any of the way you use it this would be gone now this print the initial here right whatever the value you have given so you don't have to explicitly define the data type over here so in go variables are explicitly declared and used by the compiler to example check type correctness of function call variable declares one or more variables at the same time so how would you do that if you have let's say a b and c so in python also we try to do what uh, we call it kind of tuple right so you have to have three values here so i will say 4 8 and 12 so these are the three values. Oops, I made it four. I'm sorry. So these all three values are being assigned basically. So now I have to print them. So when I print, it would look like this. See here. And even if I don't use one value, it would say, hey, why you are not using it. So let's play around with it. If I have the another value, then is it going to say yes? So it has a strict check. What's the error it is going to say? So assignment count mismatch. So either if you have this thing additional over here, then also it would say hey this there is a problem because if you have d and f there is a problem there is mismatch so that way it is smart now let's define a boolean vari variable and then uh, we have already seen the integer variables right so now let's use the dynamic declaration what we say as the explicitly you don't have to define it is smart so whenever you are defining a variable without any initial value it would take the zero value which means uh, instead of uh, showing any null and then um, you have to deal with null pointer exceptions it would go with the default value for that data type for example i have a variable e which is of type int and then if i try to use this by doing uh, print ln e and run this so it is going to print the default value which might be zero uh, yeah so there was this issue which intentionally we created to understand the mismatch in the argument when we are defining multiple variables in the same line so uh, the, another interesting thing is so you have you have defined the variable here and now you can define the value over here and then you can utilize it if you want to do both things in the same line um, and you also want to be explicit about the data type how you would do is i have a value variable e uh, rather name it as f because e is being defined as 34 so what is happening this is kind of same like you're not using the where word but you're using colon and then equal to this operator will infer based on the value it will declare it will initialize and then this is good to go 
so dynamically it would take care of that instead of defining it in this way so fmt dot println f and let's run this now same thing i am going to make a little change instead of using the var keyword i am going to comment that and i would do it in a single line i would say x is equal to initial value there you go so you did do not have to define the what type of value is it uh, so you don't you don't have to define this here so what we did here is we did it in two steps with this you can do it in one step so yeah i hope this was helpful so please follow my channel subscribe the youtube channel and then uh, leave the comment what you want to see more so this is a series of multiple videos in the Golang tutorial. So next thing we are going to cover how constants are defined in Golang and then we will build up on this. So in the YouTube uh, playlist, you will find I'm going to teach about how channel works and how other concepts in the Go, like the complex Go routine works. So as we proceed the pointer, the channels and the Go routines and everything I'm going to cover in the following video. So hit a like and then um, leave an honest comment. What do you want to see, what you dislike or what you like about this? Uh, thanks. My name is Prema Simjan and it was honor spending time. Thanks for your time.